Hey everybody, it's Andrea Anderson here, Chief Idea Specialist from Your Marketing Machines and really excited to be here, so thanks to MBRIT for the opportunity to just give you a little bit of an overview of Your Marketing Machines. We are a marketing strategy and communications company based here in Brisbane and we work primarily with small to medium sized businesses, helping them to understand where they should actually be swimming, the best lane for them so that they can have the greatest opportunities. And I look forward to actually being here today with you and sharing with you how to re-engage, repurpose and retain your customer database. So I hope you're sitting down, I hope you're taking plenty of notes because it's going to be an exciting time for both of us. So first and foremost, thanks a lot once again for being here with me. But the first thing I'd like to do is acknowledgement of welcome to country. And that is we would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of all of this land and power respects to the elders past, present and future. For they hold the memories, traditions and culture and hope of all Indigenous Australians. So thanks so much for allowing me to do that. But look, this is all about you and I guess really understanding why are you here. There's going to be probably four main reasons why this kind of information is going to appeal to you not right now. Number one, and that is you're wanting to increase your sales conversion. In other words, you've got a database and you're looking, you're looking to want to increase the sales in your particular database. Raise your hand, that's definitely me. Number two, perhaps you're wanting to create more referral partners. In other words, relationships with other businesses who will end up referring and recommending your services and products to their database. Number three, perhaps you're wanting to develop a stronger relationship with your current database. Perhaps you're not communicating as effectively as you could. And number four, perhaps you're looking at wanting to create or to seek cross promotional activities. Now, if that is you right now, then this is definitely the right place for you to be. But the first thing I actually want to talk about, and that is the marketing blueprint. And what you're going to receive with this particular presentation is a copy of the marketing blueprint, which outlines the four core aspects of marketing that you need to be aware of, from lead generation through to nurture journey, prospect experience and sales conversion. And today for us in this particular presentation, we're talking about that nurture journey side when you've actually got a lead or you've obtained somebody's contact information, woohoo, that's time to celebrate. But you're like, crikey, now what the heck do I do with it? Where does it go? And how do I now communicate to that person? Because you need to understand that sometimes when someone reaches out to you, they're not always going to be ready to purchase from you. They may need a bit of conversation. They may need to have a bit of a relationship building opportunity with you. So today's presentation is all about how we re-engage, we repurpose our communication so that we can retain our customer database. So let's get into it. Step number one, the importance of having a CRM system, customer relationship management system, and why all businesses need one. To give you an idea, database statistics, 51% of marketing influencers segment email lists and, and individualize email campaign messaging for personalization tactics. Hmm, 51% of marketing influencers segment out their database. You've got to ask the question, why do they do that? And simply because they want to ensure that not everybody is going to be treated or tarnished by the same brush. Let's think about it for a moment. Do you like it when you receive general newsletters that mean absolutely nothing to you? They just clog up your email, you go, that's it, I'm out, and you unsubscribe. How about if you receive an email from the company that you've just purchased a product from and guess what they're doing? They're trying to sell you the same product you just bought. Hmm, that's something that you wouldn't want happening to you. So the reason why we segment is so that you can actually have a fulfilling and meaning conversation 
with specific aspects of your database. Because recipients are 75% more likely to click on emails from segmented campaigns than they are from non-segmented campaigns. And 78% of consumers have unsubscribed go on, put your hand up, I know I'm guilty, have unsubscribed from emails because a brand was sending way too many emails with the same generic conversation. Nightmare. So here's where I want you to go with this. I want you to consider yourself to be a professional. I want you to be in the 86% of professionals who prefer to use email when communicating for business purposes. I want you to understand that there is going to be active email accounts are expected to hit about 4.3 billion, that's with a B, billion by 2021. That's literally just around the corner. And approximately 18% of your current database will be a client. I have to profess that I'm a bit of a, I like to set myself a competition that I don't just want 80% to be 18% to be my client. I want 30% of the people in my database to be a client. How cool would that be? But here's the real concerning thing you need to know, that every $92 spent on lead generation, so that's advertising that you're doing through social media, offline media, you only invest $1 in conversion. That's frightful team. So this time I really am going to encourage you to really be looking at your database through a new pair of eyes. Because if you have invested in lead generation and have received contact information, you must have a CRM system, Customer Relationship Management System. How else do you propose to communicate to all of those connections? Excel spreadsheets? Come on, really? We're in the 21st century, guys, so come with me. So here's your turn. At the moment, I want you to ask the question of yourself, and that is, hmm, where am I keeping all of my contacts? Are they in a box of business cards? Are they in an Excel spreadsheet? Maybe you've got them sitting inside your accounting software, or perhaps you've just got them as a pile inside your emails. That's the first question I want you to answer for yourself. The second thing I want to ask is this, do I know who is a hot lead, a cold lead, a customer, or a referrer in my database? Because if you've already got customers, you need to be communicating with them very differently from somebody who is just a cold lead coming into your database. But I can guarantee, I bet you're not doing that. Go on, admit it to yourself. And then the third question I'd like you to ask, and that is what type of relationship do I want with my database? Do you want to be the kind of person who over communicates and everybody unsubscribes? Or do you want to be that business that nobody hears from unless you've got something to sell them? So take a few moments and consider those three questions because this is going to be important for how you actually re-engage repurpose and retain your customer database. Perfect, how did you go? Did you answer those questions? Was it a bit shocking? It's okay, you're not alone. So we're gonna go into part two, re-engagement, how to reconnect with your database. And there's four aspects of this that you need to be aware of, and that is it has been a long time since you've communicated with your audience. In other words, they've not heard from you since they may have purchased from you. Maybe the second reason why you should re-engage your database is to see if your customers or your contacts are current. Maybe you've got a lot of dead wood inside your database. Third reason why you'd want to re-engage and that is to let your audience know that you are still open for business. And in these most unprecedented times, it's really important that your customers know, that your contacts know that your doors are open, you're ready to serve, and you're ready to come to the party with a solution. So important. Don't make the assumption that everybody knows because you know what assumptions do. Don't need to explain that one. Or the fourth reason why you should re-engage your database is to clean out your database by allowing contacts the opportunity to no longer want to hear from you. And that's equally just as important because the last thing you want to be doing is communicating to a database that doesn't actually want to hear from you at all. 
Second key aspect of re-engagement, and that is this is an opportunity for you to re-establish and, re and the relationship is absolutely imperative. Perhaps your business has shifted and changed and, and maybe you've transitioned as well and it's a great opportunity for you to develop that relationship. And for me, in my business, relationship is imperative. It is everything to my business, not only with my customers, past and present, but also with my referrers and even to new leads who have taken the opportunity to opt in to my business. It's very, very important. So I always recommend a few key points when you're looking at developing a relationship. Consider yourself, are you a friend or are you a foe? Personally, I like friends. Do you like friends? I like friends. So I'm going to encourage you to be a friend rather than to be the cold-hearted salesman down the road who's trying to sell you a second-hand car. Not good. Be the friend. Be someone that people can come to learn to trust, know and respect. Another thing you need to be aware of when you're re-engaging and that is you're not there to push your products or your services. You're not there to sell. You're there to allow the opportunity for engagement to take place. And we all say it. I hate it, Andrea, when they try to sell to me. Great. Don't do it. Just provide that opportunity for people to go, actually, you know, yeah, I still want to hear from you. You've still got great stuff to tell me. When you are re-engaging, make sure that you have no more, okay, no more than three newsworthy items. Let's get real, team. All of us are super duper busy. So you're really looking at any form of email and uh, newsletter or conversation or communication to be no longer than three to five minutes. And I was going to say, as long as it takes for you to brush your teeth, wipe your mouth, okay, and clean your face. Three to five minutes, okay. Reason being is that that's length of time that maybe someone's got to spare in between meetings. Uh, that gives them time to read that while they're on the bus, if they're catching public transport, or it's a great one for them to sit down and relax with. So three to five minutes, short, sweet, punchy, friendly, and to the point. You could also look at other communication channels to align with re-engaging for your customers. For example, if you know that you, you, know, you can send them down to you to book an appointment with you, or maybe they would like to, you know, maybe you could reach out to them and you could ask them if you could phone them. So there's a number of other different ways that you can also include. Maybe you can suggest that they go to your website, perhaps reach out on LinkedIn if you're on LinkedIn or your Facebook page. Wherever possible, include relevant links for them to reconnect with you, to re-engage with you and to find out about how you're going. So all of those other platforms that I mentioned, perfect opportunity for those to be included and provide a chance for them to reacquaint with you. Remember, you're offering them the opportunity to self-select whether they're hot or not for you. Ideally, you want them to be hot for you, so let them enjoy you, okay? So five tips. How do we go about re-engaging, Andrea? Quite simply, number one, polls and surveys are a fantastic way. It gives your database the opportunity to give you feedback. Number two, you may want to do an online competition where you can ask them to give you 25 words or less as to you know, why they are opening, open to your services. Number three, you may have a coupon or promo code that they can use when they next visit you online. Number four, simply ask. This is something that I did a while ago, true story. Uh, it, it, been a while since I had actually sent out communications. We'd shifted and changed and transitioned the business. And all I did was I just sent an apology email going, I know it's been a while between drinks. And I just said, hey, look, we've just been super duper busy. I haven't forgotten about you, but we've just been transitioning and changing a few things. And I just wanted to check in to see if you were still interested in wanting to receive information from me. So get real with it. Be, you know, Tell the truth. And the fourth one you want to be looking at here is setting up a series of automated um, re-engagement emails with people. And that's just so easy for you to do. So there are examples that you'll see on the screen of a re-engagement process. And that is really just sending an email. And then you'll find that four actual things will actually happen. Number one, people will unsubscribe. Number two, 
their email may, bank, may bounce. Number three, some may not get to opening your email. And number four, those that open, fantastic. What you'll also see is that for those who open, brilliant. What you do is you just tag them with a re-engaged so that you know that woohoo, woohoo, I've got people who still want to talk to me. For those that bounce and for those that unsubscribe, remove them from your list. Don't hold on to it. It's okay, they'll come back round to you when the time is right. And if people haven't, um, haven't opened your email, don't worry about it. Just resend the email 10 days later. Maybe they're really busy. Maybe they haven't had the opportunity to get to your email. It's really that simple. Don't be afraid that if people don't come back to you, it's okay, it's all good. Remember, your database is just as busy as we are. So, a few things for you to consider. Always include, you know, from the previous option, whether it's relevant links, whether it's a promo code, a poll. Fantastic way to get people engaging with you. Ensure that your email contains at least three links to how other people can connect with you whether it's, as I mentioned before, maybe to Facebook, maybe your LinkedIn, maybe go check out your new website. If you've got one, be fantastic. Send people to your new website going, hey, would love your thoughts, would love your feedback. Write personal. Team, it's really important. This is all about building relationships. So you don't need to have a formalized approach to the way that you write. Keep track of your statistics. Real important when you're using a CRM system and ensure that your email makes sense and flows. Because remember, it's all about tracking, it's all about establishing that relationship. So here's your turn. And that is, what do you want to achieve from re-engaging your audience? So important. Which op option could you use as this re-engagement offer? Could it be a poll? Could it be a competition? Or just be like me and go, Sorry, it's been a while between drinks. It's okay, people want to hear from you. And if they find that you're being personal but being genuine in that personal email to them, guess what they'll do? They'll stick around. Who is going to update and maintain this strategy? If it's on you, great, put some time aside, make sure that you have the opportunity to be able to follow that up. and. The last one, how do you propose to use the data that you collect? So what's part of that overarching strategy? So I want you to take a few seconds, resonate on those questions, and then we'll get ready for the third part. Great, how did that go? Did it answer, did you end up asking yourself more questions? I hope so, real important. So step number three. You've now gone through re-engaging, you've cleaned some of your database, you've had some people opt out, you've had some people bounce, that's fine. You've now got a database of people who have opened or they have yet to engage with you. Fantastic. I commend you. So now it's time for us here to go into repurposing our contact. And what does that mean? What does it mean when we go, why repurpose your database? And look, there's a few key things here for us. Number one, to target, specify, and segment for increased profitability. So now that you've cleaned the data, it's like a deck of cards. You've cleaned the data, you can now go, hmm, what kind of data, what kind of contacts, what kind of leads, people do I have inside my database? This will now give you a greater understanding of your contacts, their needs, their buyer behavior, and their problems. Real important for you to know. Maybe this is a great way for you to increase your average customer spend by upselling or cross-selling your services or products because you've done that initial conversation with them. Now, if you know that, oh my gosh, there's John. I haven't spoken to John in a long time. John used to be an avid client of mine. I haven't heard from John in ages. Hmm, I wonder what it is that he used to I wonder what it is that he bought from me and I wonder what he needs now going forward. And then the fourth one is this. Guys, it's cheaper to target your current contact list than to continue to lead generate. Bit of a shock, I know. Because you already invested the money to actually get that lead. So why would you not start communicating in an effective manner with them? 
So when you're repurposing through your database segmentation, here's a few key things I want you to be aware of. Communicate targeted messages. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, you've cleaned up your database and you've realised that actually out of a database of 500, you've got 50 customers. These are people who have purchased a product or service from you in the past. So that's a different kind of conversation you're going to have with that customer database, with that group, because they've already invested in you. They purchased your product, your service, right? So you're going to be talking to them a little bit different. But let's say that over here, you find out that you've got 100 people that have come through to you from your newsletter, or they've come through to you from your LinkedIn. Great, guess what? These people are yet to really understand the quality of the solutions that you provide. So they're in the, I'm just gonna sort, suss you out, figure you out, see if you're what I really need. So the way that you communicate to these people are going to be very different. Irrespective of the groups that you're talking to and irrespective of the message that you're sending them, I'm going to encourage you to personalize it. Be that, oh my gosh, he's talking to me. Is he here? Is he in the room somewhere? Like, he must know that I'm here. Like, wow, he's saying all the right buzzwords. Identify unique buyer behavior based on their interests. This is where you can start to find out more about them. What makes them tick? What kind of sports do they like? What kind of products do they like? Are they into technology? By doing so, you create a greater consumer insight and therefore you become a much more trusted solution than someone who just wants to constantly sell. And this is how you go about increasing your sales conversion. So there are three things for us when we're data segmenting here. And that is number one, outline how you want the database to be segmented. Do you want it to be customers, current, past? Are they multiple buyers from you? Have they only bought once from you and never again? Maybe you've got a database that's all about referrers. These are people who are absolute raving lunatics for you. They love your business and they tell everybody about your business. And just on that note, you need to have quite a lot of referrers in your business. So important because these are third, these are third party. These are the people who are selling you to their contacts, their connections. They're a free sales rep. So the more referrers that you've got inside your business, the more profitable your business can be, okay? Number two, create. Create tags to establish more specific targeting. You know, for example, where are they based location-wise or geographically-wise? Are they a small business? Are they in tourism? You know, uh, do they have staff? You know, what are their interests? So you create this so that you can have a greater understanding. And then the third part of that is gather customer data. We're talking about demographic data. We're talking about geographic data, psychographic data. The psychographic is that buying behavior, the consumer insights, what makes them tick, what motivates them to actually want to buy from you, what's the driving force behind that. And then their activity data, how often do they engage with you, how often do they open up your conversations or communications. Have they transferred onto your LinkedIn page or your Facebook page and they're now engaging with you there? And what you'll find is that there is an example of what the database segment actually looks like. And I've mapped this out for you in a way where you can look at this for your own business and go, well, gosh, what do I have? You know, do I have current customers, previous customers? As you will see under prospects, you'll see a very, um, I guess, a variety of tags there for you that you can use. You're bounced, you're unsubscribed, and your tag segments. And here is my example of your marketing machines database. We've broken this down into, yep, because I practice what I preach. So there are five key areas that we break down our database into, and you'll see it inside the example here. And that is I have subscribers. These are people who have only just connected with me. I don't know who they are. I don't know why they would like me or want me. But OK, let's take them on a nurture journey and let's have them self-select whether I'm the right solution for them or not. From subscriber 
they become a lead, especially if they start to engage with me and I start to get more of a, an identity on who they are and what they're looking for. From there, a percentage of them may become an opportunity for me. This is where they've connected with me directly, they, they want me to give them a proposal, maybe they want to have a conversation about their marketing requirements. And then the intention is into a customer, and then from a customer into a referrer. Guys, some of you are sitting there with some phenomenal customers and all they're waiting for you, waiting for from you, is to ask them if they know anybody. It's that simple. So don't be afraid if you've got customers, ask them for things like testimonials, recommendations, referrals. If they love you, they will love on you. And the more that they love on you, the more you can love back on them in return. So here's an example of repurposing for a customer. So let's say for example, you build websites, or you're a marketing company, and you may charge $5,000, $5, not $5, $5,000 for a website build. Here's what's really cool, is that you can now then on sell, potentially Facebook advertising, and guess what? They may now refer a colleague to you. So not only are they a customer, they're now also a referrer, and then so on and so on. So the key here is, remember, love on your customers, because I can guarantee it, they will love on you. So it's now your turn. Identify how you want your database to be segmented. Which contacts belong in which segment? Start with customers first. Where does my leads currently come from? What kind of referrers do I have? And I hear this a lot when people go to me, oh, my business is built on word of mouth, Andrea. Fantastic. Do you ever reward them? Do you ever consider them? Do you ever love on them? Okay, so if you've got that, brilliant. Create that database of referrers and then look for what cross-selling uh, cross opportunities you may have in your business. So take a few seconds and consider those questions. That is awesome. I'm hoping that you've written down those lists and you've got them all set up because we're now into the last stage, guys, and that's how do you retain your customer database? Remember, you've spent thousands of dollars to get this database. You have worked hard. You've done countless hours of networking events, so it's time to get in there. So let's strengthen that communication. Why would you want to retain your database? Simply because it's the potential for you to add on new products or services for your current customers. Think of the example of the website build, now adding on Facebook advertising. You can transition from a one-off buyer to suddenly having your customers become multiple purchaser from you. Woohoo! That's how you increase your profitability inside your business. It's a great way for you to gain recommendations and testimonials to build your reputation. And the key here, guys, is credibility and reputation go hand in hand. And customers actually transition into becoming referrers for you. Because I want you to understand that the lifetime value of a new referral customer is 16% higher than that of your average customer. Now, you might go, 16%, Andrea, that's not a lot. Mm, it is if the dollar value that they're bringing in is of a high value. Because you think about the amount of money that you're investing in lead generation, and imagine if you could revert that money from lead generation into actually thanking your referrers. Who do you think you'd get your, be your best bang for buck from? Food for thought, think that through. So, examples of retention strategies for your customers. Follow up, post product service delivery. How did they go? And that's something you should always do within the first 10 to 14 days of actually selling your product or service. Now, I say that on average um, in my marketing company because we build a lot of websites, we do a lot of Facebook advertising for people, we build out Facebook pages, we do database analysis. We always give a 10 to 14 day period so that our clients can settle in to what we've actually produced them. And then we're normally in contact with them every 30 days to make sure that they're okay. Promote your customer. This is a great way, this is a great retention strategy. Promote your customer. Talk about their business and what they do and the solutions they bring to the market space. Not only will your customer thank you, but because you've now taken the proverbial eye off you and you've put it on, you've put the spotlight on your customer, anybody else who's watching you, they're gonna go, wow, that person, they're really good, look what they do, they promote their clients. 
set up reminders to check in on a regular basis just like I said we check in every sort of 14 15 to 30 days with our clients to make sure that they're going okay start gathering additional information so their hobbies the places that they like to travel personal interests and invite to special events and ask them to bring a friend I just had an event actually yesterday where I had 15 of my clients come in and we all, they paid for their own lunch but guess what I ended up buying in these cutesy that was so cute these cutesy little gift baskets and guess what each one got one and it was a client that I used and I paid for to create the gifts. Fantastic, win-win. Um, other examples of retention strategies for your contacts. Regular communication, newsletters are really good. Customer story, like I said, how you solved a customer issue. Product story, maybe you're a product-based business and you've got products that can actually work for a variety of customers. Surveys, opinions, feedbacks any way where you can actually create the opportunity for the contact to engage with you is really important and once again invite them to a special event so here's where we turn the tables back on you again what retention strategies could you put in place today for your current and ex-customers what retention strategies could you put in place today to communicate effectively with your current database and what automation options are available for me within your current CRM system? Real important that you answer those questions because this will help determine really how best to work with your database. Okay team, we're in the home stretch. Automation is the key. So there's just a few software integrations that I'm going to encourage that you look at to streamline your communication. Number one, Calendar links, if you take bookings, rather than doing the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with the email, get yourself a calendar link. There is Acuity Scheduling, Calendly is one that I use often and is really simple. All I do is I send a link to people that's connected straight into my Microsoft Outlook calendar. They can see my availability and they can book immediately into there. It's very efficient. It's very simple and it's very cost effective. Your CRM systems. Team, I would be looking at using low cost, no cost at this point in time if you can. So look at things like HubSpot, MailChimp for example, Keep is another one which is very cost effective. If you have a payment option that you've got integrated as part of your business, then you may want to look at Stripe PayPal, yes there are fees attached to it, but it's a very efficient way for you to obtain your funds straight away. Um, social media, look at the integration from one, of, you know, from one platform to another. So your Facebook, your Instagram and your LinkedIn. And if you need to, look at Zapier integrations as well, which will help the streamline the communication from one to the other. So team, just recapping, why are you here? I'm hoping that you're wanting to increase your sales conversion from your current database. I'm really hoping that you want to create more referral partners through your database because that is a sure way of being able to create longevity in your business. I'm really hoping that you want to establish stronger relationships with your database and so that you're not, they're not just a contact, but they're actually somebody that you will invariably end up doing business with. And the fourth one is I hope that you're wanting to seek your know, cross promotional opportunities with what you've got. As I mentioned, the marketing blueprint, which will be a part of these presentations, I want you to go back and refer to the marketing blueprint and identify where it is that you're actually positioning your marketing inside your business using the marketing blueprint. So my name is Andrea Anderson, Chief Ideas Specialist for your marketing machines. And I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity and being here with you today and the greatest of success with your database.